I, John R. Ford, have put together this exhibit, SRP051, which is a video containing three animated computer simulations showing the San Pedro River floodplain. These simulations were created using Esri ArcGIS 3D Analyst. The process used the 10 meter digital elevation model to create the topography. Then the ADWR generalized geology GIS shape files were draped over the topography. The text of this video is included in my April 20th, 2011 affidavit. The purpose of the video is to provide a way for the court to visualize how the geology relates to the topography. I realize that this technology is still in its infancy, but I think that it is a useful way to illustrate how the alluvial fans overlie the floodplain Holocene alluvium. I also think that when it is compared to traditional maps, it more clearly portrays how easy it is to differentiate the floodplain from the adjacent basin fill. In the video, the vertical scale is exaggerated eight times the horizontal scale for the southernmost video animation, and it is exaggerated four times for the middle and northernmost video animations. Vertical exaggeration is a commonly used tool for portraying geology. In fact, ADWR 2011 used this tool in its cross sections shown in Appendix F. For those cross sections, the vertical exaggeration is 15 times the horizontal scale. The videos are from three different portions of the basin as shown on the map. They were chosen to represent three different settings in the basin. The first video represents the area at the upper end of the basin, south, where topographic relief is the least and where riparian vegetation is restricted to the vicinity of the active channel. The second animation is in the central portion of the basin in the vicinity of Benson and St. David. It was chosen because it includes bedrock exposures that narrow the floodplain in layers of both bedrock and basin fill, and broad areas where tributary Holocene alluvium covers much of the floodplain. The last animation is in the lower, northern portion of the basin in the Reddington area. It was chosen because there is a significant topographic relief between the basin fill and the floodplain. For orientation purposes, this location map is presented at the beginning of each of the animations. Each of the ADWR generalized geologic units is color coded in the three animations. The colors assigned follow the scheme ADWR adopted in its 2011 report with one exception. We changed the color of the Holocene basin fill from light blue to purple so that it could be more easily differentiated from the older basin fill. Briefly, the color coding is as follows. Bedrock, brown. Older basin fill, light blue. Tributary Holocene alluvium, yellow. Holocene basin fill, purple. Floodplain Holocene alluvium, green. Disturbed areas, red. To better represent the topography, each color consists of light to dark shades. The channel of the San Pedro River is shown in dark blue. Roads are shown in black. In my 2009 delineation of the subflow zone, without setbacks applied, is shown in red. The black background shows the extent of both the ADWR and AGS mapping. The first animation begins at the Arizona border with Mexico, flies northeast past the Hereford Bridge, and then generally turns north. It is highlighted in red on the map. In the foreground are three alluvial fans marked A, B, and C that extend out onto the floodplain. These fans are also shown on exhibit SRP044. Fan A is mapped as Holocene Basin Fill, purple, while fans B and C are mapped as Tributary Holocene Alluvium, yellow. All three have the classical alluvial fan shape. ADWR 2011 treats fan A differently from fans B and C. Other than the size of the sediment, the three fans are the same and should be treated the same in delineating the subflow zone. The road in the foreground crosses the San Pedro River at the Hereford Bridge. On the left side of the floodplain is the Lerner Ranch archaeological site discussed in the written portion of my affidavit. It is located just outside of the floodplain in the tributary Holocene alluvium. 
the foreground, there are two alluvial fans, one on each side of the floodplain. The fan on the left side is mapped as tributary Holocene alluvium, yellow, with a label B, and it overlies Holocene basin fill, purple, with a label A. The fan on the right side is the reverse, in that the Holocene basin fill, purple, with a label A, overlies tributary Holocene alluvium, yellow, with a label B. The Hereford Meander cross section is shown by the dashed line. This is the area where the United States drilled three holes in 1994, as shown on the exhibit SRP 045. My interpretation of the subsurface geology in this area is shown on exhibit SRP 002, figure C. This is also the area of oblique aerial photographs 16 and 17 of exhibit SRP 042. The alluvial fan in the circle is pointed out on the caption of oblique aerial photograph 17. The second animation is located in the central portion of the basin. It begins approximately three miles north of Fairbank, where the flood plain exits a narrow reach through bedrock. It ends just south of where Interstate 10 crosses the San Pedro River at Benson. The area highlighted in red is the location of the second video. In the foreground of the animation is bedrock, colored in brown. A bit north are inliers marked with brown circles of both bedrock and basin fill surrounded by floodplain Holocene alluvium. To the north, the river meanders back and forth across the floodplain and the edges of the floodplain are obvious. On the east side, right side of the animation, Extending northward are extensive deposits of low-relief alluvial fans consisting of tributary Holocene alluvium, yellow, that make the edge of the floodplain more difficult to identify. However, on the west side of the floodplain, it is easy to identify because of the slope break at the edge of the basin fill. Using the elevation of the west edge of the floodplain and the isolated surface exposures of basin fill, on the east side, I map the edge of the subflow zone on the east side of the floodplain. In my opinion, this area is where it is most difficult to map the subflow zone. On the east side of the floodplain, I have circled an inlier of basin fill surrounded by tributary Holocene alluvium. The basin fill is light blue and the tributary Holocene alluvium is yellow. It is not clear how ADWR would map the edge of the subflow zone in this area using alternative B as proposed in their 2011 report. South of St. David, which is just off the upper right edge of the map, I have circled a large inlier of basin fill. East and north of the inlier toward St. David are small fingers of tributary Holocene alluvium that would be added to the subflow zone if ADWR Alternative A is adopted. The last video, which is highlighted in red on the map, begins south of Reddington, where the floodplain bends to the east and narrows down between bedrock and basin fill. North of Reddington, the floodplain broadens and trends to the northwest. On the west side of the floodplain, I have labeled an alluvial fan A, B, C, and D. This is the same alluvial fan shown on exhibit SRP 047. Label A is on the floodplain Holocene alluvium, green. The tributary Holocene alluvium, yellow, overlies the floodplain Holocene alluvium. This in is in turn overlain by the Holocene basin fill, purple, and labeled C. Finally, more tributary Holocene alluvium, 
again yellow, labeled D, overlies the purple floodplain Holocene alluvium. At this point, we are flying straight down the floodplain in a northwest direction. From this vantage, it is easy to distinguish the floodplain from the basin fill and is easy to project the edge of the floodplain Holocene alluvium beneath the alluvial fans.